Good morning, my dears. So, we will discuss about the general outline of how a pathogen is interacting with the plant alongside how a plant is responding towards the pathogen. There's a basic complete plant pathology. Plant pathology, if it is host resistance or a non-host resistance, alongside, I'll tell you what is non-host and host resistance. Okay. So, in plant pathogen interaction, there is an interaction between a pathogen with a plant or a host or a pathogen. Okay. Here I am talking about how a pathogen is interacting with plant. Okay. I am not talking about a human virus or a human or an animal virus or an animal bacteria or nothing. I am talking about a, here the host is a plant and the pathogen may be virus, may be bacteria, may be oomycete, may be fungi, whatever it is. I am talking about a plant perspective here in plant pathogen interaction or our, our host will be always a plant. Okay, so you can see a plant, a plant and when a pathogen is interacting with the plant, okay, when a pathogen is coming and interacting with the plant, the plant will able to detect what is my behavior, my smell, my dress pattern. Just like that, the plant will detect the pathogens proteins for example if bacteria is coming plant can detect flagellin because flagella is there if fungus is coming plant can detect chitin because chitin is there likewise whenever a plant is detecting any kind of patterns from this pathogen we call those patterns are pathogen associated patterns flagellin chitin cellulose sometimes okay so this plant or so sorry the pathogen associated molecular patterns we call it as PAMPs we call it as PAMPs P A M P S this pathogen associated because it belongs to the pathogen because plant can identify these patterns okay so what happening is that if the plant if if the plant wants to detect this PAMPs plant should know the language Okay, plant should dictate. Oh, this is flagellin. This is cyanide, uh, chitin. In the plant, in the thorn, I'm angle. Plant in the muscle, I'm angle. Plant need a particular gene. Plant need a particular gene called PAM recognition receptors. Okay, if you want to recognize something, you should you should be able enough to understand what is that pattern. So, if the plant possess that particular gene, the plant can detect the PAM. Okay, the, if the plant possesses PRR, if I possess, if the plant is having this PRR, what happening is that the plant will detect the PAMs from the pathogen. Okay, if the PAM, if suppose the PRR is not there, if PRR is not there, plant cannot detect it. Okay, so the PRR will detect the PAMs. If this detection is happening, if the PAM and the PRR is interacting, it will produce a particular type of immunity called pattern triggered immunity. The pattern is triggering an immunity on this plant. Are you getting? The plant is triggering an immunity. Suppose the poor plant doesn't have this PRR, doesn't have this PRR or suppose this uh, plant have the PRR. If the plant doesn't have the PRR, plant will never produce PTI. Suppose the plant has PRR, plant in a PRR on dengil, immunity one no. So next the pathogen will produce another weapon. The, pa the pa pathogen will produce another weapon. The pathogen will start to inject because first interaction happens. Now the pathogen is attacking. The pathogen is attacking the plant or the host. So the major weapon of one of the major weapon of the pathogen is effectors. Effectors are effector proteins. The plant will be or the pathogen will inject the protein inside the plant body. Okay, the plant, the pathogen will inject. So what all things are the effectors? They are called effectors. Okay. But if the plant wants to understand what is there with the pathogen, the plant need another gene. That called receptor gene. If the plant has the receptor gene, the plant has the receptor gene plant can identify the effector okay 
pathogen nu varuna effector nu identify cheyan pattu if the plant doesn't have the r gene plant will die okay appo plant in effector gene undu nu vicharicho allengi r gene undu nu vicharicho appo r effector interaction r gene effector interaction will happen okay angane effectors mugandaram due to the presence of effectors and the r genes if an immunity is released by the plant we call it as effector triggered immunity means like lo what is pti and what is eti okay one is pattern or pam triggered immunity another one is effector triggered immunity this immunity is happening inside the plant okay happening here in plants these two immunities are produced due to the result of single genes one is prr and another one is r gene okay there is only two genes are involved in this kind of resistance are you getting rendu oro genes vidamana oru vaada number of pala tarathulla r genes undam pakshe otta r gene aan involved aavunnu so we call it as these uh, immunities we call it as qualitative resistance qualitative means monogenic resistance monogenic means single gene are involved in the resistance single genes are involved in the resistance that's why all these resistance sadhishe makale all these resistance for example the pti and the eti ee rendu sadhanam it is a responsibility of single genes prr and r genes so because of the presence of single gene we call it as qualitative resistance did you get and this part is known as innate immunity aadyam plant kaanikkina immunity kaanu we call it as innate immunity what it is that's called innate immunity plan what is inside the plant if the innate immunity is not there plant will die that's a simple thing athre illu but the plant in innate immunity undengil plant can produce pti and eti fine suppose if this pathogen is far powerful just like pythium phytophthora if they can produce toxins or metabolites it will inject the pathogenicity factor the third weapon and the ultimate weapon within with the pathogen is called the pathogenic factors or enzymes or metabolites the plant the pathogen will inject toxins toxins rather than proteins it will inject toxins secondary metabolites from the pathogen and this toxins is highly lethal to the plants okay highly lethal to the plants but if a plant is resistant enough against this metabolites the plant use its own secondary metabolites actually ivada sambhavikkunnathu plants try to neutralize this toxin try to neutralize pathogen nu varuna metabolites ne it will try to neutralize using its own metabolites plants il endalum secondary metabolites will be there okay angana plants normally undakkuna secondary metabolites which is inside the plant we call it as constitutively produced metabolites constitutive metabolites okay but after the pathogen infection plant will in- ignite or induce extra amount of secondary metabolites that is called resistant related induced biochemicals okay already the plant have an, an an ample amount of secondary metabolites but after the infection what the plant will do is plant will boost its production of secondary metabolites those boosting of secondary metabolites is known as resistant related induced biochemicals so with the help of resistant related biochemicals and the constitutively produced secondary metabolites with both the set with both the set plan will attack this toxin in order to neutralize the toxins from the pathogen means laila so for the production of this much toxin plan use multiple genes thousands of genes thousands of genes hundreds of uh, cycles secondary metabolic pathways primary metabolic pathways all the metabolic pathways will synchronized or orchestrate in such a ma- way manner to produce more secondary metabolites so there are numerous genes are involving rather than single genes so it is known as quantitative resistance quantitative resistance means whenever a resistance is produced with the help of multiple genes we call it as quantitative resistance 
whenever the resistance is responsible by or response of a single gene we call it as qualitative resistance so in a plant pathogen interaction two types of interactions are there one is qualitative one is quantitative okay and when it comes to host resistance suppose a pathogen is having a host pathogen is having a host if the host is evolved enough to produce any kind of these response that host will never die okay suppose if the pathogen is infecting a non host the plant does not know what is the effectors within the pathogen what is the uh, toxins within the pathogen so it is easy to kill this plant okay so the qualitative and the quantitative resistance will actually change when it comes to host and non host resistance it depends upon the pathogen and the plant when it is monocot and dicot it will change when the umycete and fungi it will change when it comes to virus it will change but in every interaction these are the two steps involved one is qualitative resistance and another is quantitative resistance so this is the generalized picture of a plant pathogen interaction okay so innate immunity is called the qualitative resistance and the cumulative or the um, multiple genes are involved we call it as quantitative resistance so my dear this is the plant pathogen interaction a general outline of a plant pathogen interaction just remember correlate with all the signs all the in uh, plant pathogen interaction with this picture just pictureize this you will never get this picture from anywhere because i made it okay so you will never get this picture it's a it's a product of multiple reading so my dears you just grab this picture and just keep in your mind and always correlate with the any of the pathogen interactions okay you can learn about innate immunity you can learn about quantitative resistance you can learn about r gene r avr interactions all kinds of plant immunology is based on this structure okay thank you